History has seldom seen a more ruthless and cutthroat time as the French Revolution. All across France, thousands of people were being led to the guillotine, suspected of supporting the monarchy. But as chaos broke out across the French towns and cities, no one would have ever imagined that the French king and queen would be condemned and be dragged to the infamous slanted bladed execution device themselves. Marie Antoinette, the Queen and King Louis XVI were hated across the nation, but their executions in front of their subjects is remembered in history as a turning point for the governments and politics across Europe. But following their executions, both of their remains were treated poorly and roughly, and the pair were thrown into graves not befitting their status. But they would be exhumed, and when the grave diggers opened the coffins of Marie and Louis, what they found would bring many to tears, lead men to faint and pass out, and cause a huge degree of shock. This is the opening the coffins of the headless king and queen of France. King Louis XVI is remembered in history for being the last king of France before the monarchy fell during the French Revolution, he became a hated symbol across the country, and he would make a number of changes to his nation. However, his wife, Marie Antoinette the Queen, was also very unpopular. The king was seen as out of touch when his people were starving, as the royal treasury was spending a huge sum of money on decorations for court or clothing, when the general population of France was suffering from a lack of food where they were starving. People across France were dying from this, and tensions were raised when revolution broke out. At the Bastille, the royal prison was stormed, but the king would later be arrested and was brought to trial before he was then condemned to death. But no one would have expected that the king would lose his head on the guillotine. But following his shocking death, the king's remains would be dug up, and the coffin was opened, and what those people found who discovered the remains would be shocking. King Louis XVI was officially arrested on the 13th of August 1792, and he was sent to the Temple, the ancient fortress in Paris used as a prison. But he would then be disposed of as ruler and stripped of his titles and honours, being known as Louis Capet. But the king would then, following a number of months, be brought to trial, and he was paraded throughout the crowded streets, which remained silent as he made his way to his trial, in front of the convention to hear that he had been accused of high treason and crimes against the state. When the trial began, Louis mounted his defence, but this would be in vain, and he knew he would be found guilty and would be sentenced to death. The convention would condemn him, and on the 21st of January 1793, King Louis XVI, at the age of 38, was brought to the guillotine in Paris. The guillotine would fall upon the necks of thousands during the French Revolution, but the device was actually ushered in and signed off by the king himself, and he allegedly even recommended using a slanted blade rather than a curved blade which was proposed but no one would have known that this would have fallen on the head of the king, despite his unpopularity. The king made a short speech on the scaffold, where he was drowned out by the noise of the guards. He said he was innocent of the crimes he had been accused of, but then the executioner seized the king and secured him to the wooden boards before he slid him under the guillotine and quickly released the blade. It was said that the blade did not sever his neck entirely the first time, or that the cut actually went through his mouth, or that the king would utter a huge scream following the blade coming down. But the executioner then reported that the former king had bravely met his death and end with honour. However, straight after the execution, following the king's head being shown to the crowd, his remains were collected in a coffin and placed on a cart, before they were taken to the nearby Madeleine Cemetery. Many of those executed at the Place de la Revolution were buried here due to the proximity of the burial yard, and following this, the king's remains were thrown in an unmarked grave, and his severed head was placed between his feet 
and a quicklime solution was spread over his body to allow decay to set in quicker. The French revolutionaries wanted their king to be forgotten about, but decades later he would be dug up and exhumed. It was clear to the people of Paris where the king's grave was, and there were many plans of the Madeleine Cemetery drawn up where the king's grave was marked, and there were even people who gave tourists tours of the site so they could pay their respects. In the May of 1814, Louis XVIII deliberately, on the possibility of digging up the remains and bodies of Louis XVI and his wife Marie Antoinette, and then having them interred inside the royal mausoleum befitting their status in history. The exhumations began on the 18th of January 1815, and they were overseen by a number of ministers. And the Queen's remains were found on that day, but the King's were then found on the following day, the 19th. The Queen's grave was found easily, but the King's remains were not. The search for him began on the evening of the 18th and resumed the following morning, a deep trench had been dug near a wall, and then workmen found quicklime mixed into the earth and a number of pieces of board from the king's coffin. They then found the broken skeletal remains of a man who had quicklime covered over his body, and his skull was found placed between the bones of his legs. No clothing was found to confirm that it was him, but everyone was convinced that these were the remains of the king. The remains of the king were then collected together and were placed in a chest. Following this, the bones of Louis XVI were placed into a lead coffin and prepared for reburial. It was said to this that, On the 20th of January we proceeded, in presence of the king's commands, to the house of M. Delaclos, where we, the commissioners who had been present at the preceding operations, together with other personages whose right of office or the king's commands had assembled, witnesses their removal of the remains of their majesties into leaden coffins made for that purpose. In the presence of these noble and other personages, we broke the seals and opened the chests in which the remains had been deposited. Those of his majesty were placed into a leaden coffin, together with the pieces of lime and wood, and were then soldered down. Upon the lid was fastened a gold plate with the following inscription Ic est le corpse de true halt, true poussaint et très excellent Prince Louis the Sixteenth. There are some criticisms though. Some historians have questioned whether the right bodies were found. There was no official identification carried out, and it was just accepted that these were the remains of the king. He was found roughly in the recorded area of his burial, and he was buried 12 feet down covered in quicklime. The search for the king also took a lot longer than Marie Antoinette, and it was clear this man had lost his head on the guillotine blade, but, unlike his wife, there was no clothing or hair to help identification, and the remains of Louis were in a much more sorry state. There were further searches to the area to see if there were other burials there that had been confused, but then it was accepted that these were the bones of the king. One Frenchman said of the graves before the exhumation that the tomb of Louis XVI was placed here on the 21st of January, 1793, at half past ten in the morning. A pit of eight feet depth was dug and a great deal of quicklime placed in it. The body of the king was placed in a wooden coffin with quicklime on top. On the 16th of October, 1793, the body of the Queen, his wife, was buried near him, with a smaller quantity of lime. But then the plan was to inter King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette in graves and tombs that were deserving of their statuses as members of the royal family. The revolutionaries would want the King to be given no pomp and ceremony following his execution, hence why he was buried in an unmarked grave, amongst many other people, especially those who were considered ordinary. But then the procession to bury the king in the Basilica of St. Denis occurred, and it was said of this that a detachment of artillery joined the procession at the barrier St. Denis, and following it, firing minute guns. A regiment of the king's chasseurs lined the road from Paris to St. Denis. The drums and musical instruments were covered with black serge, and the arms and colours of the troops were ornamented with crepe. A deep and solemn silence prevailed among the multitudes, 
who thronged the streets and roads by which the procession passed. Upon reaching the church of St. Denis, the bodies were taken from the car by the guards de la Marche and carried into the church, where they were received by the clergy and presented by the bishop Cassacun to the bishop of Ayr. They were then placed upon a lofty tomb of state in the midst of the choir. Monsieur, after retiring for a few minutes, entered the church and was followed by the Duke of Angloum, the Duke of Berry, the Duke of Orléans and the Prince of Conde, who occupied the stalls on the right nearest the altar. The Duchess of Orléans, the Duchess of Bourbon and Mademoiselle of Orléans entered the opposite stalls. Next to the princes sat the Duke of Dalmatia, the Duke of Reggio, Court, Bartholomew and M. Lame, who the king had appointed to support the pal when the coffins were carried to the vault. The other stalls were occupied by deputations from the court of Cassation, the court of Acomps, the council of the university, the corps royal, the municipality, the tribunal, de premier instance. The choir was filled by the great officers of the king's household, the officers of the prince's household, his majesty's ministers, the high personages appointed to form part of the procession, the marshals and the peers of France, the deputies of the departments, the grand crosses of the order of the major general and staff of the national guards, the governor of the first military division and his staff and a great number of generals and other military officers, the governess of the royal children, the ladies-in-waiting upon her late majesty and the ladies-in-waiting upon the Duchess of Angloum sat upon benches near the coffins. Four hundred young ladies of the Mason Royal de St. Denis were seated in front of the altar. When all these attendants had taken their places, the service commenced. The princes and princesses, followed by the Grand Master and Master of the Ceremonies, and their assistants approached the altar to present their offerings, after which a funeral oration was delivered by the Bishop of Troyes. The absolution having been pronounced, the bodies were lowered into the royal vault, into which Monsieur and two princes, his sons, descended and prostrated themselves upon the coffins of their royal relatives. Salutes of artillery were fired at the moment when the procession set out from Paris during the service at St. Denis and when the bodies were lowered into the vault. To perpetuate the memory of these august victims, the king has ordained that solemn funeral services shall be performed annually in all the churches of the kingdom and on the 21st of January for the repose of the souls of Louis XVI and on the 16th of October for that of his royal consort, and that on those days the court shall wear mourning, and the public offices, courts of justice, exchange and theatres be closed. King Louis XVI is considered a king who was rather terrible, and it led to his people rising up and overthrowing him. There was a chance to spare the king, but the strong mentality of the revolution and its ruthlessness would condemn him to death, and would send him to the guillotine. But years after his execution, he would be dug up and reinterred into a larger tomb. On the 16th of October 1793 in Paris, the Queen of France, Marie Antoinette, made her slow way to the executioner's scaffold. She was a woman who was hated across her nation and her husband had lost his head in the months before, and there were many people questioning what to do with the Queen. Marie was a symbol of ridicule and animosity, as she would live a very lavish life whilst the people of her nation were starving and suffering, and Marie did not seem to care one bit. She was accused of a number of serious charges, including treason, and this led to her execution. However, following the guillotine blade falling upon her neck, Marie was hastily buried in a grave in a nearby cemetery, but she would then be exhumed and her coffin was opened. What was found by those who discovered the Queen's remains was shocking. Marie Antoinette was tried by a revolutionary tribunal on the 14th of October 1793, and this was a shocking thing, as the Queen of France was being accused of so many serious charges that she could have died. Many of the people in the kingdom believed that she was actually condemned to death when she was brought to her trial, 
and her lawyers did not have time to gather a decent defence for her. But she was, as mentioned, accused of the most shocking charges, including incest and depletion of the national treasury in sending money to Austria and her homeland, as she was an Austrian princess. She was also said to have been guilty of plotting massacres, and on the 16th of October, two days later, she was found guilty of three main charges, conspiracy against the security of the state, high treason, and running down the national treasury and the finances of France. Her lawyers never thought that she would be sentenced to death, and they thought she would be sent into exile and banished from ever returning to France. But she was sentenced to death, and was condemned which shocked many. She was then sent to her prison to prepare for her execution, and she did not have a long time to wait. Marie was forced to change into a plain white dress by her guards, and she got dressed in front of their leering eyes, and then her hair was roughly cut short to prevent it snagging in the blade of the guillotine, and stopping the execution device making a clean and clear cut on her neck. But she was then led out of her prison cell to an open cart, and she had her arms tied behind her back, and the guards even attached a lead on her like a dog. This cart then slowly processed through Paris and to the Place de la Revolution, which would become her execution site. The people of Paris shouted and jeered at her, and even threw things. The once lavish Queen of France was being taken on the parade of the dead, and it took an hour for the cart to get to the guillotine intended for her. On the final journey, Marie was calm, and she sat with her priest next to her, and she was in a strange mental state, and it's believed she may have just wanted her horrific ordeal and her terrible few years to be over. The former Queen of France arrived at the execution scaffold in the guillotine at 12.15pm, and she then climbed down from the cart and was guided up the stairs to the scaffold. She even accidentally stood on the foot of the executioner, and this prompted her final words, which were, "'Pardon me, sir, I did not do it on purpose.' The executioner then placed her on the wooden board, which was then slid under the guillotine blade. Final checks were made, and the executioner then released the blade, and in one swift cut, Marie Antoinette's head was taken clean off. It was then picked up by the executioner, who showed it to the crowd, and one painting even shows how it may have been paraded by the executioner on a pike. But her remains were quickly collected, including her head, and these were taken to the Madeleine Cemetery, a sort of short distance away. It was to be buried in an unmarked grave, with no pomp and ceremony. But at some point, Marie Antoinette's head was moulded by Madame Tussaud. However, Marie Antoinette's head and body were buried inside of the Madeleine Cemetery for a number of decades, and they were left undisturbed. But people did know where the remains were buried, and some even toured the cemetery to pay their respects. But in 1814, King Louis XVIII ordered an investigation into the possibility of digging up Marie Antoinette and her husband, Louis XVI's body, and remains so they could be given a proper and decent burial. It was hoped that the pair would be buried inside of the royal mausoleum. Louis XVI's body was found on the 18th of January 1815, and Marie's body was also found very easily. What the grave div diggers discovered was quite remarkable. A layer of quicklime had been poured onto the coffin of Marie, and it had preserved her remains as it solidified. They found her remains were wearing the stockings that she was given in prison, and these were recorded in accounts at the time as Marie wearing them on the way to her execution. These stockings confirmed that this was Marie's coffin, and many then prayed at her gravesite. There was also confirmation that the Queen had lost her head, as the body clearly showed that she had been decapitated by a sharp instrument that performed a clean cut. Also parts of her hair were found on her head, and then the remains of Marie were placed inside a new coffin and a chest. Anything else found in the coffin was also collected, and then preparations were made to inter her in a proper burial site befitting her status. The decision was that she and her husband would be buried inside of the Basilica of St. Denis. Still today, her remains are buried inside of the Royal Mausoleum, and she is considered a very controversial lady in history. 
but the discovery of her coffin and the subsequent opening of this was a monumentous moment in European history. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.